Are people still moving to red states this year? And if so, why? Today, we're going to examine the trend of people moving to red states, explore why it's happening, surmise its likelihood of continuing, and look at what this means to you if you're planning to make this kind of move. So the hubby and I have been looking for the best place to live in America for us, and we came across this article predicting that more people would be moving to red states in 2022. Is this a trend that can really continue? Let's dive in. Thinking about it, we actually know quite a few people who've moved to red states. A recruiter friend of ours just moved from California to Texas last month. Another good friend who was a real estate broker in LA moved to Austin this year. We had a couple other friends move from Silicon Valley to Dallas last year. Two more friends from Nevada, which is actually a purple state now, moved to Idaho, which is definitely red. And we have another friend from Puerto Rico who just bought 200 acres in Idaho and he has plans to move there soon. And of course, there are the celebrities that have made this kind of move. Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro, Graham Stephan, Chris Harrison, James Vanderbeek, and likely Elon Musk, who's been selling off his real estate everywhere and who moved his entire Tesla factory from California to Texas. 2020 migration reports published by moving companies expose this huge trend of people moving from blue states to red states. It is fascinating to watch as our country seems to split politically and ideologically into two. U-Haul reported that four of the five top states for inbound moves, that's 80%, were red, including Tennessee, Florida, Texas, and Ohio. United Van Lines reported that three of five of the top inbound moves, or 60%, were red. So that's Idaho, South Carolina, and South Dakota. And that all top five outbound states were blue, including New Jersey, New York, Illinois, Connecticut, and California. And according to the 2020 National Movers Study, four of the top inbound states gaining new residents, that's two-thirds, were red. Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Florida, while all six of the high outbound states were blue. California, Washington, Michigan, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Vermont, New Jersey, and DC. And the 2021 migration reports should be coming out soon, so it'll be interesting to see how this trend evolves. With the initial pandemic housing rush starting to slow down, are people going to continue to make these moves? If you ask the Republican Governors Association why people are moving to red states, they'll say it's because those states are focused on creating the best possible environment for families, businesses, and workers to succeed. People who don't like the highly regulated big government approach of blue state politicians are fueling this trend. Ultimately, I think most people just want to live someplace where they feel safe and they can pursue their endeavors, where they can enjoy life with family, friends, and neighbors on their terms without excess government interference or coercion. Another factor is that the cost of living in most red states is generally less expensive and offers lower taxes than that of blue states. The real concern is that this trend seems to be accelerating a political, ideological, and physical divide in America. Where will this lead? Redfin has actually called out more migration for political reasons as a trend in its outlook for the housing market in 2022. I suppose it makes sense as we now seem to live in an era where you can't even talk to someone about politics without them flying off the handle or taking offense or sending in the social media mobs. So what do you think so far? Do you think this trend of moving from blue states to red states is going to continue in 2022? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. I think another big reason driving this movement are the heavy-handed COVID policies in some blue states. Masks, lockdowns, and of course, vaccine mandates. This is exactly the point that Michael Snyder makes in an article I came across. I'll link it down below. He observes that while one side wants the medical freedom to decide whether or not to take an injection, the other side wants to mandate injections for everyone. 
So for example, Mayor de Blasio of New York City announced mandatory vaccinations for all private sector workers. In Massachusetts, UMass Memorial Health just let go of 200 medical professionals who missed their vaccine deadline. Colorado recently launched the Smart Health Card, which makes it easy for people to show their vaccination status. One step closer to the vaccine passport, Hawaii has already created an inter-island vaccine passport program that allows vaccinated passengers to travel freely without the necessary tests or quarantines that unvaccinated travelers have to travel with. And Oregon is considering making masks mandatory indoors forever. As people tire of the pressure to comply and workers are let go for not taking the shot, they may naturally gravitate toward counties, states, and cities where these measures aren't required. In fact, South Dakota has actually launched a campaign to encourage frustrated law enforcement officers to move to their state amid blue city condemnation of the police. Finally, from a real estate investment perspective, what will this do to home prices in red states? We've already seen some incredible housing price increases there. According to a recent Remax housing report, four of the five cities experiencing the highest price appreciation year over year were in red states. Boise, Idaho at 28.8%, Salt Lake City, Utah, 27.3%, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, 28%, and Tampa, Florida at 19.8%. If the influx continues into 2022, prices for top tier cities in red states should continue to rise. So if you're thinking about making this kind of move, it might be smart from an investment perspective to start looking in secondary cities to get better deals. But whatever you do, if you're thinking about making a move to a red state, don't wait too long. Where to live is a very personal, sometimes complicated choice, and there's no one right answer for everyone. What appeals to us may not appeal to you. So take everything we've said in this video with a grain of salt. It's just opinion, that's all. So the hubby and I have moved around a lot and we always recommend working with knowledgeable, savvy real estate agents wherever you go. Whether buying or selling a home, we know some great agents across the US. So if you need a personal introduction, click the link below and our team is happy to make that happen for you. And if you'd like to know more about making a big move in America, check out this video here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.